Hi, this is me. My name's Tom and I love working in the garage. I like wrenching on all kinds of stuff, but I really love turbo cars. I enjoy sharing my car hobby with everyone and have been posting up photos and stories on my website since 1999. Now I'm trying something new. Video. This is my helper. Torch the Giant Lego Man. Today we continue work on my 91 Eagle Talon Turbo all-wheel drive. I've spent the last seven years enjoying this car and transforming it from a tired stalker to something my wife refuses to ride in ever since, um, the incident. Here's a marital tip. Your wife will never appreciate four-wheel burnouts the same way you do. <clears throat> Moving on. In our last episode, I got bit by this relentless insect it needed more horsepower. No, oh, about a hundred would be great. So I jumped into my blue jumper and the parts started flying off. Some also flew on. Specifically this awesome new Precision Turbo 6266 CEA turbocharger, a bunch of fuel components, and some newly fabricated exhaust and intercooler piping, among other things. In the last episode, we took a nice bite out of our to-do list, but there are still some pretty time-consuming tasks on there. For example, I desperately need to buff my lug nuts. Have you buffed your lug nuts lately? Oh, okay, good. First up is the battery. Ever since switching to the legendary Magnus intake manifold years ago, there's been little room for a decent-sized battery in the stock location. I've tried a couple different small battery options over the years, but none of them would hold a charge when the car sat. I most recently ran this lawn and garden battery, which was cheap and fit well, but just wouldn't last long. I could run a battery in the hatch, but you need an elaborate vented battery box, cutoff switch, and more to pass tech at the local drag strip. Plus, I actually used this car for hauling groceries and stuff, and would hate to lose my hatch. So I found one of the most compact, full-size batteries out there, the 51R, seen here on the left. This is a popular battery, most commonly found in Honda Civics. It boasts 500 cold cranking amps, much more than my lawn and garden battery, which was very generously rated at 275 cold cranking amps. Torch clearly approves. Now that I have a good, strong battery, I need to find a new home for it. Once I cleared out the stock battery tray and support, I actually had a nice sized spot for it. Time to get to work. I started by building the base of the battery tray using some good old angle iron that I picked up at the hardware store. I cut the piece as I needed and filed off the rough edges to make sure everything fit well together. Once I had the four pieces for the base cut to fit the battery, it was time to weld them all together. After the tray was all welded together, one more test fit was needed so we could fab up some mounting brackets to attach it to the car's frame. Once the fit was right, I made some cardboard templates and then transferred that to some flat stock steel. I then drilled out matching mounting holes on both brackets. I love a step drill for this sort of job. Fast and easy. After positioning the mounting brackets just right, I welded them in place. Not welding! Welding at night! Okay, we're halfway home. Now it's time for the top hold down bracket. I cut a couple more pieces of flat stock and angle iron and tack this together. After finishing up those welds, I used the flap wheel on my angle grinder to smooth out my work a bit. I ain't trying to lose points at the car show. Then it was on to my paint booth for a coat of my favorite stuff, Duplicolor Low Gloss Black. I sprayed this stuff on my toast in the morning. And here's the finished product. You can see the piece of beefy all thread that I'm using to keep things clamped down. Yeah, take that, battery. You know, I just can't stress the importance of safety glasses enough. Now that the battery was in place, I could make my new turbo intake. My plan was to get rid of that extra coupler and make one seamless pipe. To get the fit right, I busted out the sawzall, trimmed things up a bit, and welded the two pieces together to make this. Here it is in place. I like stuff like this to have an understated look. We're getting close now. I filled it up with oil, topped off the coolant, and checked the other vital fluids to make sure all was well. 
Once that was done, it was time. Time to get the wheels back on the ground. Now we're just moments away from firing it up for the first time in months. Looking over it and how everything turned out, I'm very pleased. There's no compromises to the streetability or reliability, and everything is packaged very well. Much of this credit goes to the ERL exhaust manifold as it positions the turbo in an excellent location. You know, this may just be the best part of being a car guy. The moment you can finally see, hear, and feel your work come together. The suspense was killing me as it was ready to start, but I had to leave for a family get-together. Ah! All right, I'm back. Thanks to the power of ECM Link, adapting the engine's computer to all of those changes would be a piece of cake. I just plugged in my laptop and wait, what the? There are unused icons on your desktop. Ugh, stupid computer, sheesh. Like I said, I just plugged in my laptop, changed a couple settings to compensate for the larger injectors, and we're ready to hear it run. Success! In a moment like this, you must stay focused. Look for any trouble areas and be able to act quickly. Most importantly, keep your composure and absolutely no excessive celebrating. After that exciting moment, there were still a few items left to tackle before we could go for a drive. First was to get rid of my very wimpy 30 PSI boost gauge and upgrade to the Manly Lumberjack 45 PSI version on the right. Next was the simple but time-consuming install of the Innovate Wideband Oxygen Sensor. This is an excellent, affordable tuning tool made a thousand times better since you can program it to include its readings into your ECM Link data logs. I just want to hug the guys at ECM Link for this one. While I was under the dash working on the wideband, something in me just kind of snapped. That pile of wires is a security system that was in the car when I bought it in 2005. I finally got a little tired of fooling with it. The final thing on the to-do list was to install my new alcohol injection tank and switch over to a 50-50 mix of water and methanol. This is far better than my flimsy repurposed coolant overflow jug. I started by cutting out a simple bracket template, then drilling the tank for the feed line fitting. Here's the finished steel bracket welded up, painted, and bolted to the tank. I had been running a 50-50 mix of water and denatured alcohol in this system, but decided to instead give Snow Performance's Boost Juice a try. I run it in my Turbo Miata and have been very happy with the difference it made compared to my old mixture. I definitely recommend it. Next up was to top off the tank. You know, if it's good enough for my car, it's probably good enough for me. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm, subtle, crisp flavor. Wait, what? Poison? And here's the tank, mounted, filled, and ready to go. My final step was to install a larger water methanol injection nozzle and test it out. Here's how that looks. Cool, huh? Let's see it in slow-mo. Want to learn more about water methanol injection for your car? Check out my website at the link below. So, ready to go for a ride? Ah, not so fast. First we gotta build my kid's new playset that just arrived. That's a lot of wood. Here's just some of the hardware used. In total this was a 20 hour job, but they love the heck out of it. It's for the kids. Okay everybody, here we go, taking the car out for the first time. I'm doing a little data log with ECM Link, got that going over here. Everything's set up, everything looks good. 
you know, I've had it here idling for a while. The temperature looks great. Oil pressure where it always was. Good oil pressure. Um, we're just running regular 93 octane in here now with uh, the boost juice. That's a little different. So we'll see how it does. Yeah, ECM link's pretty amazing. If you've got a car like this, if you got a 4G63 powered DSM or Gallant or early Evo, it's the best you can get. All I did was change my injector settings to 1250, fired right up, idled better than it ever has. Precision Turbo 6266. I highly recommend it. Gosh, I cannot wait to get this thing dialed in. Holy mackerel. It was pulling so hard up in the high RPMs that the old turbo I had, you know, with that small stock manifold and that old Mitsu housing, it did not want to pull in the high RPMs at all. What a difference that alone made. Woof! Man, it's so rev happy now. You can tell it's breathing better. That should be illegal. That probably is illegal. Now let's check out one of our ECM link data logs. Inside all of those squiggly lines is the secret to getting the most out of this setup. In this log, we have a second to third gear wide open throttle run. Everything looks great, especially given the conservative boost and timing we're running. Our intake temperature is a little high at 124 degrees, so I'll need to make a better cold air setup to bring that down. Also, the airflow peaked at 63 pounds per minute, and the EVO 8 mass airflow sensor is reading well past its 3000 Hz frequency limit. A speed density conversion kit from ECM Link will allow me to run more boost, eliminate the mass airflow sensor restriction, and get the most out of this combo. The Innovate Wideband shows a somewhat conservative but safe 10.7 to 1 air fuel ratio. There's also no knock to speak of, and the injector duty cycles right where I expected. Oh, and last but not least, the horsepower estimates looking pretty good too. Aw oh, yeah! Now it's time for the ultimate test of man and machine, the grocery run. I'm happy to report it passed this test with flying colors. Folks, my work here is done, for now. Thanks so much for watching. I want to especially thank everyone for all the great comments and support on the last video. It really motivated me to get out here and get to work on the car so I could share this stuff. Please keep the comments and feedback coming. The next time you see the town, it'll likely be at the local drag strip so we can do a few shakedown runs and see what it can really do. In the next episode, we're welcoming a new addition to the Turbo Garage, so stay tuned for that one too. Thanks again, folks. See you next time.